Shalom, damn it. Hello, everybody. Welcome. It is a thrill once again for me. Rabbi Sal Solomon to be here on the Dave's Gone By radio program and to be talking to someone who I used to watch on television year after year after year. I would sit there, I would eat uh, a nosh, I would have a little ice cream, uh, maybe have a little pastrami sandwich, although God forbid at the same time, and watch a half hour of just pure fun. It was called Hollywood Squares. And we'd watch and they would ask a question and the, the contestants would try to bluff and if they bluffed right, the contestant got their circle or maybe they got an X although I always really for the circle because the X looked like a cross but the main thing is that I am talking now to the one the only host of Hollywood Squares for about 15, 16 years. He's Peter Marshall. He is alive, he is well, and he is doing cabaret in Manhattan this week. So ladies and gentlemen, first of all, welcome, Shalom, Peter Marshall. Uh, thank you, thank you, Rabbi. Thank you so very much. You're very, very welcome. So first, I guess the main thing is, what, are you 86 years old now? I am 86, I will be 87 in March. Oh, mit mazel, mit glick, and let me ask, how are you feeling? Do you feel like you did when you were 66, 56, 46? How do you feel? I feel like, you know, when I was 40, I feel great. Uh, everything's good. Uh, my life is wonderful. I, uh, I'm not into age. Age has never affected me. I think it's just been attitude and how I am and, and how do you look, how do you feel. That's about all I go by. And uh, I have friends who are in their 90s who are wonderful, uh, just uh, healthy, and they, they play tennis, they play golf, they go out, they, and uh, they're, <laughs> and then I have friends in their 60s who are helpless, you know. <laughs> well, uh, it, it, it's funny how it all works. But have you, have you had to, God forbid, any operations or heart things, or you've really not quite been healthy up to this point? I was sick when I was 60. I had uh, uh, kidney cancer. Oh. Uh, I was doing like Kaja Flow. I did the national company for two years, and, and uh, then I went to the palace in New York, and it was Christmas time, and I had like weeks off, uh, my understudy took over, and I wasn't feeling right, so I went in and they did some tests, and they found a tumor on my left kidney, and a tumor on my right kidney, and uh, the, the left one was uh, malignant, the right was benign, so they took the kidney out, and that was 19, uh, well, it was 1985, so uh, uh, since then I've been fine, I, you know, I've had, you know, little illness here and there, but no, I'm, I'm fine, I, I do, I'm married to a, a young lady who's a uh, We've been together 25 years. I met her when I was 60. And she was? And she was 25. You, Craigle Robber, you. <laughs> God bless you. How, how did you meet her? Uh, I met her. I was doing Lacage, and uh, I, she was in St. Louis. And I had worked the, uh, the theater there a year earlier. It's the only time I worked twice. I came back to the Muni Opera, and I got on an airplane. This beautiful young lady who sat next to me. My mother was ill, and I don't know if you remember the singer Johnny Desmond, but he was a very close friend. And Johnny was ill, and I would fly out on my day off to see my mother and to go see Johnny at the hospital. And uh, this young lady started a conversation, and before you knew it, uh, we, I, I said, I'm going from here to San Diego, blah, blah, blah. She said, I've never been to San Diego. I said, well, join me in San Diego. She works for TWA, so uh -huh. I had to pay for eight flights. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> I said, well. oh, you got your own room and everything, and what she did. And we started dating, and... Uh, after about two I, I never thought I'd remarry after my divorce, and yet there I am, and it's been, uh, we've been together now for almost 26 years. But was it weird when you were dating this much, much, much younger woman? Were, were there issues of like, oh, she doesn't know the names that I'm mentioning, she's from two generations different from, I mean, was there any an ish, ever an issue with that? It wasn't an issue, it was kind of interesting, actually. Uh, I introduced her to my music, which is, my music is the 30s and the 40s. Uh, you know, I was I was a big band singer. I was raised by a great singer by the name of Dick Ames. He was my oh. brother-in-law, and he was married to my sister, the actress Joanne Drew. And uh, so she didn't know any of these people, and she didn't know anything about that music. And uh, I taught her the music, and she's she's probably better at it than I am. She'll listen to a great. I said, who the heck? She, oh, that's June Christie, or that's Joe Stafford, or that's uh, Chris Connors, or that's whomever. <laughs> she's and she has a great. A great feel for the music, and uh, uh, it was really kind of interesting to watch her watch her grow into my era. And, uh, and and did she introduce you to the musicians and to the culture of her era too, or yeah, no, you just stayed with yours? Not really, I'm not really <laughs> into rock and roll, and I'm not into uh, the music of today. I find abhorrent, to be frank with you. And uh, it's, everybody screams and yells, and you know, I, I grew up with the lyrics of uh, Lawrence Hart and. And Cole Porter and Ira Gershwin and Johnny Mercer. 
or those are the things I do. In fact, the act I'm doing is a reflection on the 30s and 40s. It's called, and then she wrote, it's an evening of women songwriters. I need such as. And I tell stories about Dorothy Fields and Betty Comden and Carolyn Lee and, and singers, uh, writer, writers you never heard of, you know, like uh, Ruth Lowe and uh, Mabel Wayne and Doris Fisher, who wrote all these hit songs. And I tell their stories. I work with two wonderful, very young girls. Of uh, course. Back with young girls. <laughs> yes. I don't blame uh, you. A young singer pianist out of Canada, by name Carol Wellsman, who's wonderful. And a young lady who's up for another Grammy this year. Her name is Denise Donatelli. And the three of us just, uh, what we do is we tell these stories and sing these songs. And, <clears throat> and it's a lovely evening. And we'll be at the Cafe Metropolitan on the 11th, uh, the 11th, 12th, 13th, and 14th. That is right. And, and by the way, the Metropolitan Room is 34 West 22nd Street. It's right, I guess, is that Chelsea or Soho? I'm not sure what that area is. That is Chelsea, yeah. It is Chelsea. You can get there on the, most any of the West Side subways. It's a block away. Very nice place. I've been there, the Metropolitan Room, to see. And then she wrote, featuring Peter Marshall. Did you conceive the, the did you put it all together? Did you write the interstitial? Uh-huh. I'm sort of. I sort of know that whole era. I don't know if you've seen my PBS specials, but I have two PBS specials that are very successful. One's called The Big Band Era uh, that I host with Nick Clooney, George Clooney's father. And, uh, and then I think we have a fairly new one. It's about six months uh, old. It's called The Big Band Singers or Vocalists. And I wrote all of those. Uh, I'm kind of into that era, and I, I kind of know about all that stuff. But, so I put this together. Actually, I, I wrote this about four years ago, and I did it with, I don't know if you recall Mimi Hines. Vaguely, yes. I, or they were a comedy team. I did it with Mimi Hines and Christine Andreas, oh. a wonderful singer. Yes. But Christine lives in New York, and uh, Mimi's in, in Las Vegas and doesn't like to travel too much. So I, I redid it again with these young girls, and uh, it's been very successful. Now speaking... Hopefully New York will, will like it as much as I, we enjoy doing it. Well, uh, by the way, and if you want to see, there's there's clips on the internet on YouTube. There's like a, a five or six minute teaser uh, promo for this particular cabaret show. So so if you go, I guess to uh, boysinger.com, you can get that link and watch it. It's very entertaining. But I want to ask you, since you brought up comedy teams, that is basically how you got your start, is it not? No, I started actually uh, as, a, as a as a band singer. I grew up in New York, by the way. I'm a New York kid. I went to New York when I was 12. And uh, I was an usher at the Paramount when I was 14. I was Ooh. a page boy at NBC at 15. And then I joined a band. My first job was at the Adams Theater, which is no longer there, in Newark. And uh, I sang with the Bob Chester Band. And then I went to war, like, all, all, like we all did. And after the war, I came back and I teamed up with Tommy Noonan. Uh, and right. we became Noonan and Marshall. We were very, very well-to-do comedy teams, especially on the West Coast. But we went to, we worked the Latin Quarter every year for many years, for a couple of months. And, and then we uh, well, worked at Martinique in New York, and we worked all over New York. But we were basically a West Coast act. And uh, from that, I, I went back into theater. I went to London with Cheetah Rivera in 1961 to do Bye Bye Birdie. Oh my goodness, really? I did not know that you acted opposite her in Bye Bye What was Cheetah like? Cheetah is the best. Okay, but uh, any anecdotes, any stories, any uh, memories? Well, yes, I, it was a wonderful year for me. Uh, I, you know, there's a, there was an old drugstore out here that I can't think of the name, Schwab's, uh, and Schwab. I was a friend of mine, a fighter out of Texas, but then my buddy Turner wanted to go there. I never used to go there, and I went, that's where a lot of Turner was supposedly discovered, but that's not true. Anyway, I was discovered <laughs> there. I'm having lunch with Buddy Terman, and the guy walks up and says, you're perfect. I said, what do you mean? I said, my mother used to say that, but I don't think really <laughs> so. And he said, no, 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 you're, they're doing Bye Bye Birdie in London, and they can't find a leading man in your program. Would you fly up to, to San Francisco tomorrow and audition for Gower Champion? I said, sure, I did. And three days later, I was in London. And, <clears throat> you know, I heard about she, I saw her in West Side Story. Well, she's about as... Uh, as sweet and nice and talented as anybody's ever been. And uh, we just had a wonderful year or so, and I brought my children over, they went to school there, and I went antiquing every day, and, and uh, it was, and I, I was doing a lot of commercials for uh, Ilford Film and Marks and Spencer, 
May, may I ask also if you have any memories or, or anything that you learned from being directed and choreographed by Gower Champion? Well, the funny thing is, Gower was ill, and so he didn't really direct me. The, the fellow who directed me was Michael Stewart, who wrote the, oh. uh, uh, who wrote the book, who wrote Bye Bye Brady, right. and he was the best director I ever worked with. I finally did work with Gower, and I did the uh, Vegas company of Bye Bye Birdie with the New York company, K. Medford and Olds and Dick Gautier. And I worked with Gower, and it was just wonderful to work with Gower. And, uh, but it was like a week rehearsal. Oh, it wasn't. So, but what about Mike? You said that uh, Michael Stewart was Michael the best Stewart, director. Uh, who, wrote, who also wrote 42nd Street, who wrote. Yeah. The, uh, he, he, what made him the best director you ever had? I, well, he c conveyed to me exactly what he wanted. Okay. And, uh, you know, most guys, you know, they beat around the head. You don't know what the heck they want. But Michael Stewart let me know exactly what he wanted because I only had a week to rehearse. They were opening up in uh, Manchester. They had been in rehearsal for four weeks. And I believe uh, Farley Granger, the actor, had, uh, but he didn't seem to work out. So they sent me over. I had a week to learn the book and learn the choreography and the stuff. And uh, we opened, and, and Michael just, it was wonderful to me. He just let me know exactly what he wanted. Now, now, speaking of, it's interesting that the pattern of someone else was basically in mind for something that you ended up getting. That was also the story of the Hollywood Squares, was it not? That's true, and it's also my first Broadway show with Julie Harris. Oh, wait, all right, start with that. What was your first Broadway? Was it Skyscraper? Skyscraper, my first Broadway musical. I had done other shows, but that was my first musical. And somebody was in rehearsal, it didn't work out, and I was doing a show in L.A., called What This Country Needs, and somebody caught me and said, I told them there's this kid in L.A. who would be perfect. So they flew me in, I auditioned, and I got the job, and I had no money. And so you, where did I stay? I stayed at Cheetah's apartment in New York. Oh, that is so sweet. <laughs> With her husband, then was Tony Mordente. And, uh, and so I, I, that was my first Broadway play. And speaking of one of women, Julie Harris, I would have been so fortunate to have worked with, you know, leading ladies who not only were talented to the nth degree, but uh, they were just so kind and sweet and wonderful. And that's Julie Harris. So I've, I've been very, very lucky in my whole career. I really have. I've, you know, you hear working about terrible people. I, I've never really run into that. Not, not anyone, nobody. And well. Maybe during squares, we would have a few people that uh, were fairly distasteful. Such as? If they're dead, you can oh, say it. Oh, no, I will, I will not mention names. Even even if they're no longer on this planet? Uh, the, well, actually, the two people I, I think of are on this planet. So. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Well, did you have did you have leverage? Could you say, as the host for all those years, and say, you know, let's not have them back on, or it wasn't your decision? It wasn't my decision, but I did go to the producers, and there were two people. I said, please, uh, you know, you have nine stars, and if one person is, you know, negative, it brings down the whole show. And uh, it wasn't difficult for me to deal with them. But it was difficult for the other people. Oh. Difficult for the director. And so I said, you know, it would, I think it would be a great idea if we didn't invite these people back. But I didn't have any say so. In fact, my sister, I had never worked with Joanne. And I, here's a young lady, my sister, who had done Red River and uh, all the King's Band, and she wore a yellow ribbon, all these big. We had never worked together. And so I said to the producers, I'd love to have my sister on the show. And it took some time to get her on, to be frank with you. And then when they got her on, she didn't want to do it. I said, you can't do this to me, Joanne. And, uh, and she came on, she had a t-shirt, because I've always been either Dick Kane's brother-in-law or Joe Andrew's brother or Tommy Noonan's partner. She came on with a t-shirt that said, Peter Marshall's sister. And uh, she was darling. She was, oh my goodness, my sister. Is she still there uh, with us? Is no. She... Oh, sorry. It's been a long time. She, she passed about 15 years ago. She's passed in my arms. She was, I was holding her as she passed. Oh, was she ill? And she was, you know, our dad had died when I was 10 and she was 14. And, and mother took us to New York. And uh, I've been raised by women, my grandmother, my mother, my sister. Uh, women have been very influential in my life. And here I am doing an act with two girl singers. And, oh, by the way, yes. my pianist is a female and the bass player is a female. So I'm surrounded by women and I love it. And your wife is keeping a very close eye on you, I assume. Not really. <laughs> 
<laughs> well, she knows you're 86, but still, but still. By the way, we are talking with Peter Marshall, a well, not A.K.A. F. K. A. Your your name was Ralph Pierre Lacoque when you were first. Ralph Pierre Lacoque is my real name. That's it. Now I have to ask: Did you take a lot of crap when you were a kid, or was that a normal name? Oh no, no, no! I took all kinds of crap when I was a kid. <laughs> and, you you and, take all kinds of crap still? <laughs> no. But my my kids are all Lacoque. You know, my son Pete played for the Royals and the Cubs. Pete Lacoque. Yeah, the baseball player, of course. Yes. Yeah, and uh, my daughter Suzanne's a producer, and she's. Well, wait, why didn't they take the name Marshall when you changed it to, to Marshall? They were Lecocks, or Laycocks, as they say down in West Virginia. Uh, they, they didn't, you know, they didn't mind the name. I wish I had never changed it to be from. Really? Oh, hello? Uh, I oh. wish I had kept my name. Uh, it, you, know, you know what I wanted to change my name to? Tell me, tell me. When I was 15, you know, I was always Pete Lecock. And uh, I got my job singing with Bob Chester. I wanted to change my name to Peter, my mother's maiden name, Peter Frampton. Oh, my God. <laughs> no kidding. Yeah, they said that's a dumb name for show business. <laughs> so my sister, John Robert Towers, gave her the name Joanne Marshall. She was a dancer in New York and a model. And uh, uh, she worked, in fact, she was in Jolson's last show called Hold Out of Your Hats. And now Jolson was badly in love with her. This is, I had no idea. Please say these. You're telling me these wonderful stories. Tell them, please. Well, uh, he, uh, Joanne, he was in love with Joanne, and uh, I was an usher at the Riviera Theater up on Broadway at 96th Street. <clears throat> we all worked as kids. You know, I've been working sure. since eight years old. But it was a depression. Everybody worked. And nobody minded. It was wonderful. And uh, anyway, he said, hey, kid, what can I do for you? You know, he was up there schmoozing my mother and myself. My mother couldn't stay at them. <laughs> Sighting Angst. I did not know that. That's a wonderful, that's a terrific story. But anyway, please continue. Well, uh, you know, I, I don't know. We were, we, I, we digressed there momentarily. And I, what was what the we, question? I don't even remember what I think we were talking about Lecox. Oh, well, there, yeah. <laughs> anyway, I changed yes. my name uh, to Peter Marshall because of Joanne and Joanne Marshall. Ah, right. And uh, that's where I got my name. And John Robert Powers, who had a big modeling agency in those days, gave her name was Joanna Letitia Lecoq. And he said, you can't go around no, you, like that. You're now, you're now Joanne Marshall. Uh, my, my, my real name is Moish Latuchas, and I certainly had to, to change that to uh, Saul Solomon. It just, it just totally made sense to do that. But can I ask, I didn't also realize you were uh, in, in the war. Do you I have any war, memory? I was served in Italy. And I, was, uh, I was in the Fifth Army, and I was a forward observer, but I never saw any action. Oh, thank God. I, I wound up uh, running the radio station in Naples, Italy, because I had learned how, to, as a page boy, I learned how to run a combination, how to run a board, because uh, I wanted to be a disc jockey, too. And uh, Well, it fits. So you I sound like a disc jockey. Which is a long, long story, Rabbi. Uh, there had been a radio actor by the name of John Raby, who I used to take care of, uh, walking down Via Roma, and I hear this, hey, Lecoq, I'll turn around, it's, he's a captain. And he said, uh, what's going on? I said, well, they're shipping us to Manila. We're going to invade Japan because the war was winding down. And, and uh, he said, no, 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 no. He said, I'm head of IND, which is information and education. He said, I got two job openings. He said, I got the, the job of stars and stripes. I said, I can't spell. And he said, how about uh, this jockey here in Naples? I said, I could run a board. They made me a sergeant, and I ran the station. I was program director for a year and a half. So that's how I... Wow. That's a good way to spend the. I would go to war if I could run a radio station. Let me tell That's you. Right, and it was a fifty thousand watt station. I, they heard me all over Europe. I had a, a show tonight. Uh, it's eleven o'clock in Naples, and time for yours for the asking. It's a Sergeant Pete Laycock, and blah 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 blah. <laughs> I was known all over Europe. 
And actually, I, I uh, weren't you doing, I don't know if you're still doing, a radio, sort of a music of your life kind of radio program? When were you doing that? I've been doing that for many, many years. Still? Are you still doing it? Uh, off and on. Okay. Yeah, you know, AM radio is just taking a beating, as you must sure. know. And uh, we, when I was with uh, with Music of Your Life many years ago, I started with there was Wig Bartendale and and all these other you know all these wonderful people, uh, uh, Gary Owens and myself. And we were two hundred some stations. We're down to like thirty stations, and I just don't have time to do a lot of it because, believe it or not, I'm busy at my own at my old age. Well, you're busy doing the cabaret. What else are you busy and playing, playing golf? What else? Well, you're just doing stuff. You know, kids and grandkids. Oh, yeah. and all. I have twelve grandchildren. Good vault. Wow, Mazel Tov. And I'm expecting my fifth great grandchild. So there you go. Wow. <laughs> so I am busy doing something. That, that's that's marvelous. That's marvelous. And we are busy talking with Peter Marshall, whom now we have to get to, of course, your years with television's Hollywood Squares, and just. Let the memories come. Any really funny, hilarious anecdotes? Anything that uh, had to go on the cutting room floor because you couldn't air it? Just, no, just whatever comes to mind. You, that, yeah. that, that, so that was the charm of the show. Uh, we got by with murder. We really did. We were, uh, you know, they said what they call standards and practices. And uh, we were so cl we were so doggone clever they didn't realize that we were a little off color. We did things that you just couldn't do in those days, but we did. Such as, what would be an example? For then, for the 1970s, that was pretty uh, risque, especially for the middle of the day. Oh, absolutely. It wasn't all in the family. It was... We started in 66. Right. Oh, wow. The 60s and 70s, yeah, we were, we were, we were very... It was, it was a fun show to do. I went in and did five shows. It took me four and a half hours. I'd walk in. I knew rehearsal. I'd go over the questions. I would sit down and laugh for four and a half hours, and they paid me all this money, and I went home. I mean, it sounds like the most wonderful job in the world, but... It's it. It's, it's the best job I ever had and the easiest job I ever had. And it made me an entity of sorts. You know, well, I've yes. been around for a long time doing this and that. <clears throat> I was known in the business, but I couldn't sell four tickets. Well, that's, that's for most of us. But let me ask, though, if you read Wiki or some of the other bios, as much as you loved it, as much as it was fun, towards the end, was it true that you were getting a little tired of it, you wanted to move on, and so you would ask for astronomical salary increases and a network, which was... I wanted to go back to Broadway, to be frank with you. Yeah. And, uh, and so they, they would keep uh, giving me all this money, and so I just would stay. And in fact, after we went off the air, I did another show for two years with uh, called Fantasy with Leslie Elegance for NBC. And then they offered me the national company of... Uh, you got to remember, when I was doing squares, mm -hmm. I would do Vegas. I also... They would give me eight weeks in the summer. We'd get eight weeks ahead. And I'd go out and I would do Guys and Dolls or I'd do The Music Man or I would do Cactus Flower. I did theater. And uh, so... It's just in the blood, isn't it? It's like you're making all this money, you have an easy job, you've got the media, you've got the attention, the fame, and everything, and yet you still, you have to get out there and do a show. Of course. Uh, it's, 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 you know, it's like Jay Leno still does stand-up. You, yeah. you, you have to. Is that true? That's true. That's true. And, and uh, uh, you know, my kids will say to me, hey, Dad, why don't you just take it easy? I said, why? Uh, it's the most fun job in the world. And it's good for the brain, I mean, to learn all this stuff. We do 40 songs in this act I'm doing. We do 40 songs. Some are just one chorus of this and maybe right. a chorus and a half of that. But I tell all these stories and <clears throat> we do all these songs. And uh, for the most part, I knew all the songs. But now we're doing harmony things, you know. Uh, and it's a lot of work, but it sure is a lot of fun. 
I'm sure it is. And by the way, I have to remind everybody that And Then She Wrote is playing through January 14th at the Metropolitan Room in Manhattan, 34 West, 22nd Street. That's right between 5th and 6th Avenue. You should definitely check it out and check out the uh, the website of Peter Marshall, which is boysinger.com. It's a place you can find out about his book, which is backstage with the original Hollywood Square, published by Rutledge Hill Press. And also you can see clips, or a promo clip, of And Then She Wrote, with uh, Mr. Marshall singing and everything. And I just have a couple more minutes with you, and it's been absolutely delightful and wonderful talking to Peter Marshall. I'm wondering, are you in touch still with any of, quote-unquote, the old gang from either the squares or the, the shows that you've done on Broadway and on uh, nationally? Absolutely. Such as? Uh, well, my, you know, Artie Johnson and, and, uh, and Joanne Worley, uh, my friend Freddie Willard. Uh, I mean, it goes on and on and on. And I, the ones that are still with us, I, I see. Uh, my neighbor is Mike Connors, who was on Mannix. We just had lunch together. Uh, I don't know if you know what actor was. They call him Super Dave. His name was Bob Einstein. Oh, he's, he's, he's Albert Brooks's brother. He used to and do Albert the Super Dave. In fact, yeah. I'm probably too young to remember this uh, rabbi, but his father was a great comic on the radio called Park Your Carcass. Right. And uh, But Bobby's one of my closest friends. And there's a singer, pianist by the name of Frankie Randall, who I'm really... And we have a place in the, the desert, in Palm Desert, and uh, uh, we go down there for about three months a year. And... Uh, yes, they're, they're still around, and the guys that and I had lunch the other day with Mike and uh, Grant Tinker, who was very oh who my was goodness, head of NBC for many years, and then of course he had MTM. He was very very Tyler Moore. He created the very Tyler Moore show. Yes, yes. And I just had lunch with them over at Bel Air the other day, and I'm in touch with the. Uh, Everybody is still around, absolutely. And R.E. Johnson is still around. I thought he had passed, yeah. but... Uh, no, 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 no. Gosh, no. Oh, thank God. That's wonderful. Oh, my goodness. Well, wish him well. I, I, I remember oh, no. him well, yes. He travels all the time. He, he, he and uh, Gisela, his wife, they're always on a boat somewhere. And But he goes to the Galapagos, and then he'll go down here and goes there, and he'll go to, he'll go to Africa. And that's all he does. He just travels. Why not? Why? Who wouldn't if you had the opportunity? And you go to Hawaii at least once a year. I think I read that somewhere. Do you still do that? I go to Hawaii because I have a son who lives in Kauai. Yeah, I go. I go see my grandkids, my great grandkids over there. Yeah. Like you hear my animals screaming and yelling. Yes, I do. I have three dogs, and I think my uh, I think my gardener just showed up. So <laughs> all that noise. Oh, that, that, that's perfect. I, I just have uh, one more question for the wonderful Peter Marshall. I know I've kept you a little over time, but it's just been so delightful talking with you. But but one person that uh, we haven't mentioned yet who, since you said that Al Jolson got you one job and then you were going to do the Bird Parks thing for another, but didn't Maury Amsterdam help you get the Hollywood Squares gig? Well, you know something? If he did, I was not aware of it. Oh. Uh, but uh, but I've heard that he he's the one that recommended me to Heather Quigley uh, because I had been straight man with Tommy Noonan all those years. Uh, whether he did or not, he was one of the kindest. I see Rosemary, by the way, all the time. Yes, how is she? Is she well? How is she doing? She's not well. Oh, I'm sorry. But, but she's having a, a knee surgery uh, on the 17th, I believe. Uh, she's got arthritic knees. And, and uh, anyway, she's... Uh, and of course, they were as close as you can be. In fact, it was Rose Marie's idea to put Maury on the show. But Maury was one of those guys who would write material for you, that he would go out and recommend you. He was just the kindest, most gentle man in the world. And he was a very talented musician and a writer. And uh, he, so he, he may have had, I'm not quite sure. I never asked uh, Bob or uh, Merrill, my producers, if that was the, the catalyst for me being hired, I should have, but, uh, but I didn't. But uh, it's quite possible, Rabbi. Well, it has been just absolutely terrific and delightful talking to Peter Marshall. You can go see him. And then she wrote, playing January 11th through the 14th at the Metropolitan Room on West 22nd Street. Do you see yourself at all slowing down in any way? Uh, have well, you I would hope not. Good. But I'm sure that uh, somewhere along the line, uh, they're going to say it's, it's about time you went to pasture. But, by the way, we do two shows on Saturday and two shows on uh, Friday, two, two on Friday, two on, on Saturday. I think it was 7 and 9.30, something like that. So it'll be two shows on Friday, two shows on Saturday, and then one on Sunday.
Sunday matinee. Right. And uh, then a, a Monday show. So uh, the prices are pretty good, I understand. Uh, we don't, it's not like Feinstein's where, where I appeared. And <laughs> well, yeah. That was frighteningly expensive. The Metropolitan is just a darling room, and, uh, and you don't get killed price wise. This is, I mean, I think there's probably a base setting, a two-drink minimum, but again, it's not like Feinstein's where the, the base is $95 plus the drink minimum. You know, here, right, it, 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 plus the, you know, uh, I, think there is a, there, I think there is a cover charge, but I don't think it's uh, frighteningly expensive. And in fact, sure. at, at Feinstein's, I think they forced you to buy a dishwasher. And, I think, yes, <laughs> and it didn't work. Yeah. Oh, there you go. <laughs> oh, Mr. Marshall, what an absolute pleasure it has been. I wish you great success with the show, with all the projects. That, are you working on another cabaret uh, thing uh, after this? Uh, yes, hopefully. Uh, what we're going to be doing, they're having a big convention on the 11th. That's why we took this date, uh, where all the uh, performing arts centers have their convention in New York. And so hopefully we will have people come and see us. And uh, hopefully we'll be working at Performing Arts Center in your city soon. Now, would they not come to Denver, please? Or, well, Greeley would be even better, but at least Are Denver. You in Denver? Well, well, we're in Greeley, Colorado, which is about an hour north of Denver. So do one in Denver and come up to Greeley. There you love, are. There you go. We, Bill Cosby is going to be here in a couple of weeks. So, so yeah, people do come here for of some, for some every, reason. Every city has a Performing Arts Center. Yeah, thank God. It's, it's tremendously important. Do you have any advice, finally, for uh, people, for the kids, for the young fellas who are going into show business? I always say, if you're going to be in show business, if you want this, that's what you want, try to get a job around the business. Be a gopher. Uh, be a, a... Or a marmot. At one of the networks. Uh, get a job around the business. Uh, you want to be a writer? That, that, that's what I would... Get a job around that particular uh, business. You want to be an actor? Try to get a job at one of those studios. You know, be to be anything, and and take lessons. Learn how to dance. Learn how to fence. Learn how to ride. Learn everything you can, because believe it or not, I learned my first job as a kid was a, as a tap dancer. I hated it, but it came when I Bye Bye Birdie. I do the whole big dance. Right. Number. Without that, I probably wouldn't have had the job. Uh, learn as much as you can about anything and uh, and try to get a job around the business. That's wonderful advice. And Peter Marshall, thank you so much. Everybody go to boysinger.com. Go see him at the Metropolitan Room. And just much, much continued health, happiness, and creativity, the most important thing. Thank you, Rabbi. It's been my pleasure. Mine too.